She's done making lemonade from lemons. Fergie ditched the crown, flipped the tabloids the bird, and embraced that big D, um, Duchess energy, as a mother to everyone on the planet. Diana Spencer and Sarah Ferguson were distant relatives, but became true friends in their teens, as Princess Diana often invited Fergie to posh parties and official events, including the Royal Ascot in 1985, as a potential match for Prince Andrew. Though the prince and Fergie had known each other since childhood, as Vanity Fair noted, the meet cute flung the pair into a whirlwind romance. As the relationship progressed, Ferguson began making public appearances with the royals, and Town and Country reported that she relied on Diana to guide her. Diana loaned her clothes or offered advice. Ferguson later wrote in her autobiography, My Story, about her first public appearance. Just keep smiling, Diana whispered, and I did, as I would for long years to come. On the 23rd of July, 1986, the cameras were trained on the future Duchess of York, as she made it official with Prince Andrew. But after a mere three-day honeymoon on the Queen's royal yacht, the couple was forced to head back to London. Fergie later admitted to Oprah that she was surprised by Buckingham Palace and the darkness of the rooms. She claimed they were only allowed to use 30-watt bulbs. She added, You didn't marry to get the fairy tale. You married a man. You fell in love and you married the man and then you've got to come to terms with the fairy tale. But as she tried to adjust, the British tabloids were ruthlessly tearing her apart. They honed in on her weight, calling her the Duchess of Pork and dubbed her fashion sense a no-style zone. Fergie struggled with her portrayal by the media as well as living as a royal, admitting... I was hungry for life, and this life made me lose myself. At first, the newlyweds seemed to get along. During the couple's Canada tour in 1987, Fergie delighted fans with her enthusiasm and sense of fun. But, according to McLean's, the Queen was later disappointed in the pair's half-hearted attention to royal obligations. Andrew often went on naval duty and Fergie rarely made public appearances. It also seemed that no matter what she did, she never got it right. If she went on tour with her husband, she was criticised for leaving her daughter Beatrice at home. But after several years of abuse from the media, Fergie seemed to care much less what the press or even the royal family thought of her. She told the outlet, My clothes and what I look like, really, that is entirely up to me. Because, quite frankly, Andrew likes it and I like it. And if no one else does, well, that's their problem. But the cracks in the relationship began to show in 1992. Following the birth of their youngest daughter, Eugenie, Fergie and Andrew were rarely seen together. And they were soon separated, but it would be scandalous photos of Fergie that ultimately brought the marriage to an end. The Queen granted a divorce in 1996. Newly single, Fergie moved to the United States. She retained her duchess title, but no longer received financial support from the palace. She quickly unearthed a new career as an author, publishing her first children's book in 1995. Ever since, the duchess has written at least 38 kids' books, several autobiographical stories, and even historical fiction. She also supported herself with endorsement deals, like a whopping 11-year partnership with Weight Watchers. Do you mean is there some handout from the Queen? No. No, not at all. Nothing. The more time she spent in America, the more she emerged from her shell. She launched her own charities, first in the UK with Children in Crisis, and later in the United States with Chances for Children, explaining that her grandmother's advice was her inspiration. She shared with People magazine. Uh, my grandmother always used to say, when you feel bad about uh, yourself, go and give to others. In a 2021 interview with People, in celebration of her book, Her Heart for a Compass, Fergie revealed that the COVID lockdown changed her life. I have, um, I've really become Sarah. The subject of her book, she said, was much like her, a true redhead, spontaneous with a zest for life. During the lockdown, Ferguson ramped up her YouTube channel reading loads of children's books and playing a role she called everybody's grandmummy. It was her gift to those who felt lonely, and she often appeared without makeup and in costume, much to the delight of children young and old. 
One of Fergie's most notable imprints in philanthropy is Little Red. CBS reported that the character was originally designed as a logo for the Chances for Children charity in the US in 1994. The cartoon was soon made into a keepsake rag doll that could be given to children. Ferguson quickly saw how popular the doll became and crafted a series of children's books all about Little Red. Then, on September the 11th, 2001, Fergie was headed to the charity's main office in the World Trade Center, as she later recounted to Larry King. She was filming at Good Morning America, and her assistant was on his way to the office when they received word of the devastating attack. But in the rubble, firemen had recovered a little red doll that had fallen from the windowsill in Ferguson's office on the 101st floor. I gave the, a little red doll to a girl on the, on the sidewalk. And had I not, I wouldn't be here. Ferguson told CBS that she wrote a second Little Red book as a gift of gratitude to the American people, explaining, you've given me back my life, you know? The American people have embraced me, just said, it's okay to be yourself. Where nine years ago, when I arrived in the US, I was a broken, sinking vessel. Now my children have their mummy back. And it's all thanks to the American people saying, you're all right, Fergie, come with us. It's okay. The next decade saw Fergie emerge as a businesswoman, author, and truth teller when it came to royal life. She continued to devote more of her time to charity, even rocking a stunning red gown during Fashion Week for The Heart Truth in 2004. While she and the Queen have remained cordial, Fergie is occasionally snubbed from family activities. Marie Claire reported that Prince Charles refused to invite her to the private after-party for Prince Harry and Meghan's wedding. But despite the bad blood, Fergie and Prince Andrew have enjoyed a glorious sort of reunion. She confirmed to the Financial Times that when she is in England, she lives with Andrew at his home at the Royal Lodge, although in different wings. Though she was once caught selling an all-access story about Andrew in 2010 to raise money, Andrew still stood by her side. Fergie, in turn, has stood by him in the face of his own scandals, despite all damning evidence against him. She claims, We support each other like pillars of strength with the honour and integrity of truth. No matter what she has endured throughout her life, Fergie practices gratitude. During a 2002 interview with CNN, she talked about all of the embarrassment she has faced in the press, adding, Thank heavens I have been through that because I learned, I learned so much about myself. And in learning about yourself, you can be humble to understand that basically all I'm here to do is just keep on talking, really. Because there are an awful lot of children out there that don't have a chance to be on Larry King and talk about how difficult it is to be in the freezing conditions of Afghanistan right now, or whatever it might be. Admitting that she was forced to become an expert in handling all sorts of media coverage, she said, I'm lucky. And how did I get here? By making so many mistakes that the press got rather curious about how I made so many mistakes. The good thing is that I learned. I am the luckiest person. With her every move scrutinised in the media, Fergie had to get philosophical about her mistakes and missteps. She talks about the mental toughness that her position has required, once telling Larry King, I, for so many years, have lived in the darkness of thinking, I've done everything wrong and been irresponsible and probably have many times. But I am very good at blaming myself for everything, very good at beating myself up. But she fought her demons and ultimately learned how to turn a negative into a positive. She explained, OK, I made a mistake yesterday, but I'm going to give today a very good shot. And all I can do is teach myself my own boundaries. And let's just hope that by going forward, you can make a difference. Admittedly, though, with such public failures and humiliations, she had another coping mechanism that was less empowering. And she would often use food as a way to comfort herself. Since that time in her life, she has written five books in partnership with Weight Watchers to encourage other people in their wellness journeys too. I had my friend, which no one knew about, that was food. As long as I could numb out my feelings, I would be fine. She's clearly a multi-talented powerhouse. But as Fergie once told Harper's Bazaar, 
The only thing I know I've done 100% right is be a good mother. I'm proud to say I'm the best mum I know. People say to me, what is your brand identity? And I say, I'm a global mother. The Duchess has also been open about the impact her charity work has had on her own life. As she wrote in an essay for The Evening Standard, it has certainly made me a better mother to my daughters Beatrice and Eugenie, giving me a sense of perspective and allowing me to encourage them to use the platform they have to get involved in charitable work. Fergie's most recent philanthropic venture is Sarah's Trust, which helps match wealthy benefactors with charities that suit their interests and beliefs. The Duchess is quoted on the Foundation's website as saying, I'm incredibly excited to be bringing all of my charitable causes under one roof with Sarah's Trust. It's something I've wanted to do for a long time. When it comes to never giving up, Fergie was all goals from the very beginning whether it's on behalf of her own loved ones or her ever-expanding global family. It sounds like this red-headed, freckled 60-something duchess is just getting started. <laughs>